what you're going to need is some giant yarn. This stuff is number seven, 35 millimeter needle. We're not actually going to be using anything but our hands. So what you're gonna do, find the center, somewhere there. I don't think that's it, but... There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I have unraveled mine because I'm going to be doing this in one sitting. And it is a lot easier than trying to pull it out of the thing. And so when you pull it out, it kind of gets twisted up. And you kind of have to untwist things, so I just pulled it all apart and I'm ready to go. So to start, what you're going to do is we are going to create a loop with enough tail end to be able to like tuck it in to the rest of the work once we have a start. So I have about uh, six inches there. We're going to create a loop and then from the working end, so the working end is the part that is connected to the rest of the yarn, we are going to pull it up and through that loop and create another loop. So tension is really important here, trying to make everything the same size and not being too tight or else it will be too tight <laughs> and you will have a very hard time getting the rest of the stitches through and it just it's not going to look the best. So you want to find the nice in between. Okay, so we are going to create a chain of however many it takes to get to what I am imagining. So I'm thinking 10 to 15 maybe. We'll see. We'll see how long that is because we are making a dog bed here. So, you know, depending on how big the dog is, it will also then depict dip depend on how big the bed is. So I am making for a somewhat big dog. So I want it to be about two feet wide and then again three or four feet long depending. Probably three feet long. Yeah, three feet long will be perfectly fine. Okay, so I am going to be making all of my chains here about the same length. Okay, and then to the easy way to get the chain through without like pulling too tight on this one then would be just to hold this stitch down, pull the new chain in, make it the right size. And then again, just hold that down and oops, see, and let go and then hold too tight. Okay. We are just going to continue doing this until we get to our desired length. add a couple more on so I'm gonna do 11 12 I'm gonna do 12 okay so now that we have our chain we are going to start the first row so this is our foundation row and now for the other rows. This is where the hand knitting comes into play. So 
we are going to keep the first one so I guess more like 11 which maybe I should do one more one two three four five six seven eight Okay. This comes up as a loop, and then it's easier if you lay um, your yarn going the way that you're working. So right now we're working this way, next time we'll be working this way. So just lay your yarn this way because then it's easier just to grab it, go up into the loop here. And pull up the loop. Again, we're trying to make everything somewhat the same so we keep our tension nice. Okay, through the next one. So the parts that we're going in is actually this top part here. Just putting my finger through and my thumb through and pinching it with and pulling it through. for the first actual knitted row. So we're gonna lay our yarn out this way and then we're gonna go and pull up a loop through all of these loops. We are going to pull up our loops making sure that our yarn is coming out this way so yarn coming out that way, pulling up our loops. Okay, so do you see how this one here is kind of twisted? It, if I put the loop through while it's twisted, it's not going to give you that nice knit look. It's gonna actually just continue to look twisted. So. What you have to do is make sure that it's laying flat before you put your new loop in and through. Okay. And this one feels like it's maybe a little bit big, so what I'm going to do is pull it to this one, which is a little bit smaller, and if that doesn't look better, then I'll just continue pulling until it's all looking nice. So we're going to follow it going this way, so I'm going to pull that just a tiny bit, that looks better, and then shrink this one down a little bit, shrink this one down, there that's better, okay. So what I like to do is kind of just push it through with one hand, grab with the other, and then hold down this with the one that's not pulling it through, just to keep everything nice and neat. And then it keeps the tension as well. Okay. sort of see it coming together. It'll be a lot clearer the next row. <laughs> okay. So 
kind of make sure our yarn is on the other side here. upside down and I'm just going to go in and around some of these loops that you only really see in the back of the work. to whatever our desired length is and I think I am going to do about three feet we'll see how uh, how far we can get with one ball extremely important that you keep the loops the same all the way up because if you don't the tighter you get if you've been nice and loose here will start to get tighter up top so it's gonna start getting to be not nice and straight and it'll start looking a little wonky so <laughs> really important that you keep the loops all the same consistency. twisted this bottom one here. What I'm going to do now is take the loop out, untwist, and put the loop back in. Same with like if you had one down here. Basically what you do it was undo the loops until you get to it. that, fix it, and then just redo the loops. Going up. Just like that, dun dun. See, this is what I pulled out of the center of that, and now it's all twisted. All I did was shove the stuffing in more and then tie it 
tied the two fabric ends together. And then we're just going to continue knitting. This one here is twisted, so I am going to do what I showed you. I'm just unlooping everything till I get to the twisted loop, untwisting it, and looping back up. Just like that. Perfect. So to bind off, we are going to make a loop like we would, make another loop, once you have two loops, you're going to take this first loop and put it over the second loop. So for this, you want your loops to be a little bit looser so that it's not pulling too much. That one is a little pulley pull. There we go. And then bring up another loop and pull that loop over the other loop. Again, bring up another loop and pull it over. Bring up the loop and pull it over. Bring up the loop and pull it over. <laughs> Bring up our final loop. as a big giant loop and then we are going to cut this with enough length that it will be able to tuck in nicely okay. Pull the remainder away now we are going to pull that a little bit tighter and then weave in the ends. In order to weave the ends in, we're gonna do what we did at the beginning. We're gonna flip it around, and then we are going to go and tuck it around where you will not see it from the front. Just like that. Then in order to make it all look nice and even, what you're going to do is stretch it out as wide as you can, and then stretch it out as long as you can, and everything will look nice and symmetrical. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, please give it a like. Comment down below, let me know what you're making and what else you would like to see being made. Um, yeah, just thanks. Have a good one. Bye.